Britain's biggest union, Unite, will debate its historic link with the Labour Party at its conference in July. Today, the union's General Secretary, Len McCluskey, appeared to row back from earlier warnings of a rethink unless the party showed it was the voice of organised Labour. Labour's acting leader, Harriet Harman, has insisted the party's new leader won't be chosen by the unions. Our political correspondent, Robin Brandt, reports. She is the interim leader of a party in crisis. Still, though, some applaud Harriet Harman. Almost two weeks has passed, but she says Labour is still very raw and very upset. We lost, and we lost badly. There's no getting away from that. And it came as a shock. We thought we had a fighting chance of forming the next government. And the 10 o'clock exit poll was a body blow none of us will ever forget. Her job now is to try to keep the Labour Party together as it works out what went wrong. She's also got to steer it through to September when a new leader's chosen. Her plan is to open up the process this time. As we conduct this debate, as we elect our leader and deputy leader, we must have the public in the forefront of our minds. We must let the public in. Into our minds and into the process as we make the decisions about who is our next leader and how we go forward. That means you could have a say in choosing from this lot. Under the plan, any member of the public could vote for four of these five who want to be Labour's next leader. You'll have to pay a small fee first, though, of £3. So what we're seeing is an attempt to open up the Labour Party as it tries to recover from that disastrous election defeat. But at the party's roots are the trade unions, and they are very reluctant to lose influence. For decades, the unions held huge control in the party they founded, with block votes and more influence than party members or MPs. But last year, Ed Miliband changed the way the leader is chosen. There was a special conference, and they backed one member, one vote. But can Labour move away from being dependent on the unions? Let's not kid ourselves. Uh, the Tories have plenty of money coming in through their business connections, tens of millions they can rely on. The Labour Party only has its party members and the affiliates and a handful of uh, what one would call, inverted commas, wealthy supporters. So it is absolutely the People's Party still. But the figures paint a slightly different picture. Yes, affiliations from unions and other groups make up the biggest chunk, 24%. Members' fees are 17%. But donors aren't just a handful. They account for 16% of the party money. So what does Britain's most powerful union leader think of those reports? That he is considering a divorce? Of course I'm not. I mean, some of the stuff that the media writes is frankly daft. So this idea that we're considering disaffiliating from the Labour Party is nonsense. We're not considering that at all. You're not. You're absolutely categorical. Absolutely categorical. You know, if this is a scoop, then so be it. We are not disaffiliating or considering disaffiliating from the Labour Party. Labour has a long way to go since Ed Miliband resigned the day after the election. In these first few weeks, though, the unions are asserting their control as others in the party try to restrict it. Robin Brandt, BBC News. Well, with us now to discuss the likelihood and the political implications of Labour and the unions lessening their links are Steve Richards from The Independent and Adam Bienkov from politics.co.uk. Welcome to you both, gents. Thanks for coming in. Uh, and I was talking to Lemma Classic on Thursday and he called for Jim Murphy uh, to go and it was very noticeable that two days later Jim Murphy's gone. Now, you know, maybe it was going to happen anyway, but Adam, it doesn't suggest to me that uh, there's any lessening of power, particularly on Labour as things stand. Well, I think there are some personal problems between Jim Murphy and Lemma Classic. I don't think they've ever really got on. And I think it is true that the United and Lemma Classic do have influence over the Labour Party. And I think that isn't necessarily a bad thing. I think uh, Unite represent a million and a half members and other trade unions represent millions of people altogether. I don't think it's a bad thing that they have some influence. If they didn't have any influence over who the Labour Party chose as, an, as a leader, it would just be left to MPs. And you don't see it as the kiss of death? No, absolutely not. I don't think that it's a huge issue for most voters. And if it was, I think the Conservative Party would have made a lot more of it during the campaign. And actually, Steve. they barely raised it. I think it would be a lot better for the Labour Party and indeed for the Conservative Party if there was state funding of uh, political parties. I think that if Ed Miliband had won, in coalition probably with the Lib Dems, state funding would have been in his first Queen's speech. 
um, and if I'm pretty sure that would have been the case, and they would have been liberated from this endless dance between is X, Y, or Z pulling strings because they put up money uh, to the Labour Party. Now, that clearly isn't going to happen now. It's not in the interest of the Conservative Party. You've got tonnes of money to introduce an unpopular measure like state funding. So they are probably stuck with this relationship because the alternative for Labour is bankruptcy. Right. And the alternative for unions is an uncertain future as to where they lie politically. But I think it looks bad, actually, um, even though there's now a very strict one member, one vote for the leadership contest mm. um, that was changed during the last parliament. It looks bad when it appears that one or two big figures who sort of disappear during an election campaign but then pop up afterwards say, right, it should be X or Y. And, um, and I think that is damaging. I mean, Will Straw, the Labour candidate who didn't get his seat in Rossendale, came out with a very interesting remark mm. last week and he said, every Labour voter should ask their non-Labour voting next-door neighbour what they think of the candidates, not themselves. Now, isn't the problem that when you've got the unions, Labour talks to itself, it turns in on itself, so everyone pats everyone on the back instead of wondering about the wider electorate, Adam? Well, I think that uh, trade union members will, will ask their neighbours. And actually, I think the influence of endorsement from a trade union leader has been massively overstated. But, but what it... about Ed Miliband? Let's, you know, let, let's just attack that one, mm -hmm. shall we? Because Ed Miliband, and that was raised many times by Cameron in the Commons and outside, that Ed Miliband was the union stooge, was his choice of words, and that Len McCluskey put him into the job and he's now seen as having failed. Well, I think this is something that, that conservative activists and politicians get very excited about. I don't think it's something that the general public are that concerned by. And actually, if you look at um, trade, their, the leadership of trade unions, trade unions their um, influence on the leadership is, is quite limited. In 1997, uh, Tony Blair only got the endorsement of one trade union, but more than half of all trade union members voted for him in that election. But isn't that the difference, you see, that trade union members can do what they want, but it's, it's, it's seen as that sort of, you know, the puppet master trade union leader? But he's not a puppet master. He doesn't have a block vote. He doesn't have the say over what his members do. It's perfectly right as the leader of a trade union for him to say to his members, I think that X candidate would be best for your interests, and it's up to the, his members to then make their own decision. And Steve, maybe that's right. Maybe it's something that we concentrate on, but the general public doesn't really well, care about at it, all. It's worth pointing out that the voting system has changed since 2010. So the system under which Ed Miliband has uh, got elected is now different. Um, however, I think there is a deeper problem here. If um, people follow Will Straw's advice and ask their next-door neighbour who they wanted, frankly, they probably won't have heard of any of the candidates. I mean, one of the more fundamental problems in this election is that this job requires a political titan. And there's no evidence that there are political titans about at the moment. Um, and so there is that kind of fundamental thing, that um, you could have Len McCluskey advising, uh, you could have Len McCluskey's next-door neighbour advising, and they probably wouldn't get much further. It needs someone to emerge over the next few months who shows a capacity certainly to deal with issues around the unions, mm. but also many, many other topics as well. Well, you know, it's been said before, they have to, uh, to appeal to the SNP in Scotland and to the UKIP in the north and to conservatives in the south to unite not, that. And not impossible to frame a message that shares be... the interest probably of us three in this studio, Scotland and the rest. It's not impossible, but it needs some pretty Do you know, do you know who that thinking. person is within the Labour Party? Well, I think the most likely winner of the leadership uh, is, is possibly Andy Burnham. That wasn't what I asked. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that he manages to unite those three factions? I think, he, I think any leader is going to struggle. And I, I do agree. I think Whoever becomes the next Labour leader is going to have a huge task of trying to win back SNP voters, trying to win back UKIP v uh, voters. There's this question of the Tories sort of break well. clause, isn't there now, that you have somebody in place for, you know, they're sort of calling it the IDS time, you know, two years in the yeah. job and then you re audition <laughs> almost. Is that workable? Yeah, politics is, is, is a pretty unpredictable business, and to already plan for the next Labour leadership contest when this one is already at a sort of fairly embryonic stage, it might happen. I mean, what I think will be the case this time is that they will act ruthlessly if it suggests it's not working. Um, that There is this theory that the Labour Party is sentimental about its leaders. It doesn't chop them off their heads. It's not quite as straightforward as that. I mean, remember the poll suggested 
that Miliband might win this election. Mm. And that's one of the reasons why the, the, the ruthless uh, chopping off the head didn't happen. And Adam, revisionism is always time. very interesting to watch as soon as uh, defeat has surfaced. But do you think there was anyone in the shadow cabinet that didn't agree with what he was doing and did tell him? Or, I mean, you well, know, it, when you... It's look... interesting, isn't it? I mean, they had the, the first leadership hustings at the weekend and they were asked this question. I said, well, you're, you're saying now that Ed Miliband's strategy was all wrong. Where were you a few weeks right. ago? And they all said, oh, well, you've got to be loyal to the party leader. I think that is certainly true, but... I'm but not... then it's unity at the expense of possibly victory. I think or... it's interesting what, is what was said behind closed doors, and we don't know how much pressure they put on Ed Miliband. It doesn't seem like they put a huge amount of they pressure. They didn't put much pressure on. Yeah. Um, the, it, it, a, a leader gets the spoils in the Labour Party, and they have considerable power to do what they want. And Ed Miliband had considerable power to do what he wanted. So and think... dissent was expressed privately to people like journalists, not to him. Um, and it will be interesting to see what happens this time. As I say, if a leader appears to get into trouble, I don't think they will tolerate that for five years and, and, and they will get rid of him or her. But as I say, we're leaping about 25 barriers yeah. here. They haven't elected him or her. It could be that there is a titan up to the task amongst these candidates. We should, we'll know in the next few months. Thank you both very much indeed. Thanks for coming in. This is BBC News at five and these are our headlines. A nurse has been found guilty of murdering and poisoning patients by containing...